Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India last few lectures I have emphasized the need for uh, biomaterials development particularly uh, bioceramics and composites and uh, I have also um, discussed that how the uh, elastic modulus properties of high density polyethylene based materials can be tailored and tuned to uh, to obtain uh, desired wear resistance properties. And if you remember that high density polyethylene hydroxide alumina based hybrid composites, they are quite, uh, th they are being developed uh, for uh, orthopedic uh, applications particularly as a potential alternative to acetabular socket uh, for total hip joint replacement. So, in today's lecture what I am going to do is that I am going to discuss that uh, uh, friction and wear properties of transformation toughened zirconia. So, if this friction and wear properties of trans in case of friction and wear of the transformation toughened zirconia, uh, it is very important to realize that how one can tailor fracture, fracture toughness of this uh, zirconia based ceramics. Now, those who are not from ceramic background, um, it is important to understand first that what is the uh, what is transformation toughening in zirconia ceramics? First of all, zirconia uh, they have three polymorphs. So, you have a uh, high temperature phase that is cubic phase, then comes tetragonal phase uh, in the intermediate temperature region, and then comes monoclinic phase. Now, at room temperature, it is the monoclinic uh, phase. Now, depending on the dopant content, what is dopant? For example, uh, depending on the dopant type and content, now what are the dopant type? Dopant type can be either yttria or ceria or calcium oxide or magnesium oxide. These are the different oxide dopants which can be which can be even niobium oxide also niobium doped uh, zirconia is also possible. These different type of oxides can be doped to zirconia and this will have an influence on the phase stability of zirconia. So, phase stability of zirconia in a sense that although the tetragonal phase is not thermodynamically not stable at room temperature, but, but we in yttria doped or ceria doped zirconia tetragonal phase can be retained at room temperature. So, this there is a there, there is a compositional effect and because of this compositional effect the thermodynamic property of the system also changes and that allows the tetragonal phase to be retained at room temperature. So, this is one of the important things that one should remember. Now, as far as the typical phase transformation temperature is concerned cubic phase is stable above 2370 degree Celsius between 1170 and 2370 it is the tetragonal phase which is stable and below 1170 degree Celsius up to room temperature it is the monoclinic phase which is stable. So, these are the three major polymorphs of zirconia. Now, as I said this alloy oxide content is nothing but dopant content. So, dopant content I have just mentioned. So, if your dopant content increases what it means that this particular tetragonal phase what we call is T zirconia phase can be uh, zirconia phase is stable at room temperature. Okay. And if your elastic constraint in the matrix also increases for example, if you add zirconia to alumina matrix. So, you have the pure alumina and then you add little bit of zirconia in the alumina matrix. So, zirconia particles are now 
so, so zirconia these are the particles right these are the zirconia particles but if this zirconia particles is constrained in an alumina matrix now alumina their elastic modulus is 390 giga pascal whereas zirconia their elastic modulus is 210 giga pascal now by by dispersing zirconia in alumina matrix essentially you are allowing the zirconia particles to experience larger elastic constraint in their neighborhood because all the alumina grains or all the all the uh, or the alumina grains which are part of the alumina matrix they have higher elastic modulus and accordingly this because of the elastic constraint uh, the zirconia that higher uh, higher high temperature tetragonal phase can be retained so essentially it will not allow tetragonal to undergo phase transformation to monoclinic phase so i repeat there are three effects that which will which will uh, influence or which influences the zirconia phase stability the first one is the dopant content second one is the elastic constant and third one is the grain size grain size means the if the grain sizes increases then what happens the tetragonal phase can transform to monoclinic phase but if the grain sizes decreases that means if the gs decreases then what will happen even the tetragonal phase also can be retained down to room temperature now why there are so much uh, enthusiasm about this zirconia phase stability because if a couple of decades ago um, this um, a group of australian researchers uh, like rc garvey and hanning richard hanning they wrote a paper in uh, nature and this paper title was ceramic steel the the and that causes lot of enthusiasm in the community uh, in a simplistic manner let me explain that why tetragonal phase suppose this is a crack tip suppose this is a crack so around the crack phase if tetragonal zirconia is retained in the phase and then a crack tip has a particular stress field right in the tensile stress field now in the crack tip stress field <coughs> suppose this is sigma xx this is sigma yy and all suppose in the crack tip stress field this is your t phase tetragonal zirconia phase if tetragonal zirconia phase they transform to monoclinic zirconia I am just trying to explain you tetragonal zirconia has always a desire to uh, transform to monoclinic zirconia phase. Now if tetragonal zirconia transforms to monoclinic zirconia typically there is a volume expansion of 4 to 5 percent. So 4 to 5 percent volume expansion what it does it will induce the compressive stress on the crack tip and if this compressive stresses are realized at the crack tip then what will happen this crack opening displacement that cod this is called cod that is called crack opening displacement so this crack opening displacement is uh, reduced and therefore the crack tip will be blunted so from this very basic information or very basic uh, very basic information that how tetragonal zirconia can influence the crack growth resistance in the microstructure it should be clear to the students that this tetragonal to monoclinic zirconia can be invoked at the crack tip and that will lead to the crack tip closure or crack tip blunting that will lead to the crack increase in the crack growth resistance ultimately K1C that mode 1 cra uh, critical crack tip fracture toughness also would increase. So the, if the driving force for the crack propagation is reduces that leads to the increase in the fracture toughness. So that couple of things that let me also tell you in another slide. So these other things that I wanted to discuss that if the crack tip driving force for crack propagation or driving force available at the crack tip if that is decreases if that decreases that mean stress intensity factor at the crack tip decreases so if crack if stress intensity factor decreases that will increase to 
that k i that is so if this k i decreases and that leads to uh, increase in the fracture toughness or increase in crack growth resistance. Okay. So, for example, alumina their fracture toughness is around 3 m p a square root meter. For zirconia their fracture toughness is around 10 m p a meter square. So, that is why zirconia is one of the materials which is considered as a high toughness ceramic. Okay. So, toughness is one of the important things that that toughness toughness is essentially a measure of the crack growth resistance. So, this typically ceramics are, are known for the inherent brittleness and fracture toughness if that is increased then, then the application of the ceramics also would widen. So, therefore, there is a uh, there is a general uh, trend in the ceramic community to understand and utilize the transformation toughening of zirconia in various other ceramic systems. But in this particular case study what I am going to follow is that, that how to tailor the fracture toughness of the ceramics so that it leads to better wear resistance properties. The question that I am going to address uh, and address that you know does it mean that if you develop um, ceramics with better toughness properties does it mean that it will always lead to better wear resistance properties or in other words is the toughness for transformation toughened ceramics is important and therefore, toughness of the transformation toughened ceramics should be carefully tailored in order to uh, develop materials with tailored wear resistance property. This may not be the case for non transformation toughened ceramics like alumina or silicon carbide and those kind of tra non transformation toughened ceramic for, but for zirconia it is fairly important as you will see in next 15 minutes or so that our results have shown a few years back that it is indeed important to tailor the fracture toughness in order to optimize the wear resistance property. Now, let us go back to the slides again. So, we have seen this particular statement at various time points in this NPTEL lecture and I would like to reiterate again that wear of materials is a system dependent property is a system property. So, I repeat wear rate of stainless steel does not mean much unless one would specify that wear of stainless steel against alumina or wear of stainless steel against zirconia. Now, what are the factors that would influence the wear of ceramics? One is a friction couple like flat and ball combination, second one is a contact condition the dry or lubricated contact conditions, third one is that contact configuration like pin on disc, ball on flat etcetera, fourth one is the surface roughness of contacting surfaces, microstructure, grain size, phase assemblage etcetera mechanical properties hardness and toughness I have put toughness with a different color font just to emphasize that in this particular case study I will show how toughness also plays an important role in determining the uh, wear resistance of this ceramics. And last one is the experimental parameters like load duration frequency displacement etcetera. Okay. So, like in some of the earlier case studies we also use that fretting wear of this party of uh, fretting wear of this transformation top and zirconia ceramics and this is the fretting wear of the mode 1 that is linear relative reciprocatory tangential displacement sliding. So, you apply the load against this is a typical bottom flat type of uh, configuration where the flat is given a linear reciprocatory sliding of very small amplitude like 80 micron and so on. And these are the this fretting wear has major applications like in ball and roller bearings, femoral steam in total hip joint replacements and so on and so forth. So, this is the setup the experiment fretting setup that we have used in our uh, in our experiments and this is the normal load that we are adding like a fan and this is the this is the ball this is the ball that we use 
we can use zirconia ball, we can use alumina and so on. But in this particular case study, we have used zirconia balls and this is your translational translation table and this is your sample. So, you have a inductive displacement transducer. So, where your while you induce a the while there is a stepper motor which will give this motion, but also you can quite well control this displacement. And also you have a piezoelectric transducer just to record your frictional forces and there is a charge amplifier oscilloscope and so on. So, which help us to record this one. So, we have not only used uh, zirconia in one of our studies against transformation of in zirconia, transformation of in zirconia. So, that is called self method zirconia versus zirconia. But in this particular case, we use zirconia versus tungsten carbide cobalt which is a hard metal. And here this cobalt percentage is 6 percent. So, tungsten carbide 6 percent cobalt that is a typical hard metal that we have used. Now, this YTZP stands for Yttria Stabilized Tetragonal Zirconia Polycrystals. What it means that, so you add Yttria Tetragonal Zirconia Polycrystals. So, essentially this zirconia is yttria stabilized, yttria doped zirconia. The amount of yttria here is typically varied between 2 to 3 mole percent. Okay. And why tetragonal? Tetragonal means by adding 2 to 3 mole percent yttria to zirconia, we are able to obtain phase pure tetragonal zirconia in this particular case. That means that microstructure is fully tetragonal phase. What is a linear displacement is 200 micron, 10 hertz is the frequency and 100,000 cycles is the fretting duration. Why this load? Because we have done that several different other initial test, but we have found that 8 Newton load is good enough to expire to, to cause very um, severe deformation and wear at the fretting surfaces. So, and this particular combination of parameters also allow us to ensure grossly fretting contact. Grossly fretting contact means if you put tangential force uh, versus displacement. So, grossly fretting contact means it is have a very wider loop and that will give is that larger loop and that that is what is expected in many of the applications with severe operating conditions. Testing atmosphere, we have used dry and ambient uh, ambient conditions and then wire is characterized using microscopy as well as laser Raman spectroscopy. Now, <coughs> this is at that ambient uh, humidity conditions you can see. So, T3 stands for 3 mole percent tozo powders. So, it is 3 mole percent yttria stabilized zirconia and this is also T2 stands for 2 mole percent yttria stabilized zirconia powders. These are the tozo powders. Tioxide, there is another company. This is also 3 mole percent yttria stabilized zirconia powders. Okay. Now, intermediate grades TM2 and TM2.5 essentially means that this is the mixed powders of 2 mole percent yttria stabilized and 2.5 mole percent yttria stabilized zirconia. Now, what you see is that in this particular case, it is 3 mole percent tozo powders. The quotient of friction of Zirconia, this is the YTZP versus tungsten carbide cobalt, it is 0.35, it goes up to 0.65 coefficient of friction. That means with commercial powders, coefficient of friction of 3 mole percent by zirconia is quite high, whereas those of powders are much better. Second important thing is that that when you reduce the uh, reduce the dopant content from 3 to 2.5 essentially you are going you are going uphill in terms of friction that means frictional coefficient increases qualitatively entire frictional behavior is almost similar but when you comes to quantitative uh, differences in terms of the <coughs> coefficient of friction steady state wave you see that there is a difference like if you go comp uh, correspondingly 3 to 2.5 to 2.5 to 2, you see that coefficient of friction is 0.55. Now, one of the intriguing results is that if you when you measure that wire volume and when you plot it against fracture toughness, that is fracture toughness is K1C, 
which is measured using the indentation cracking method here. Indentation cracking means you take a weaker sand and indent. In case of ceramics, weaker indent, they cause cracking. Then you measure the total crack length 2C, you measure the indent diagonal 2A and from their calc from these measurements you can find out that what is the fracture toughness K1 C values. Now, what you see that wear volume then it is increases here as you increase the fracture toughness that is true for the commercial powders ceramics which are made from commercial powders. Now, from our own powders like powder mixture like TM 2.5, TM 2 and so on you again see that there is an increasing trend of wear volume with fracture toughness. This is not only true for 50 to 52 percent RH that is relative humidity that is ambient conditions and this is under dry conditions. Your, this is your ambient and this is your dry conditions. So, dry conditions again 5 to 8 percent relative humidity again you see that fracture toughness increases. From T, T, T3, D3 to T2 that fracture toughness clearly increases and that leads to increase in the wear volume. So, what it means that that it is important to tailor the fracture toughness properties because um, higher fracture toughness essentially means higher tetragonal zirconia transformability. Transformability means if you go back to my earlier, earlier sketches that I have drawn. So, essentially transformability of tetragonal zirconia essentially means that ability of tetragonal zirconia to transform to monoclinic zirconia in the crack tip stress field. So, higher the transformability, higher would be the potential of tetragonal zirconia to transform to monoclinic zirconia. This is very important for you to remember the transformability is somewhere similar to hardenability which is used for steels. So, if a steel is very good hardenable mid steel what it means that the steel can be, uh, can be hardened very fast by simple heat treatment conditions without resorting to very aggressive heat treatment conditions. So, <coughs> higher tetragonal zircon transformability, higher toughness, but lower wear resistance that is very important because this lower wear resistance that is of concern to um, that is a concern and that that can particularly limit the applications of this uh, zirconia ceramics for various engineering applications. Now, if you look at this uh, if, uh, if you look at the uh, ACM images of the own surfaces as I have been repeatedly telling in this NPT lectures that in this particular lecture we always emphasize to discuss and describe the wear mechanisms based on various microscopic observations. And so is the case in the present, uh, so is the case in the in, in this present case study that what is what you see that there is very clear abrasive scratches in that 3 mole percent tetragonal zirconia, but there are also abrasive scratches you can clearly see aligned towards the sliding directions or fretting direction here, this is your fretting direction. But what happens is that you will see some additional observations. Now, if you look at very closely in this particular image that there are some cracking, there are some micro cracks and these micro cracks are aligned perpendicular to the sliding directions. And when you align these micro cracks perpendicular to the sliding directions, what will happen? these micro cracks can grow very fast because in the perpendicular directions there is also tensile stress field and in the tensile stress field can drive these cracks and that can lead to uh, measurable crack growth and that can lead to micro cracking induced spalling. So, micro cracking induced spalling that is the major culprit for the low wire resistance for high toughness tetragonal zirconia polycrystals. Now, let us look at some other observations. Now, what happens in the dry conditions you have you remember that we have also done the test at the 5 to 8 percent relative humidity conditions. Now, where the severity of the abrasive scratches increases because and that corroborates well with the wear volume of this material. But what is more interesting to see even this micro cracking which is perpendicular to the fretting directions that severity also increase. 
and in some of the cases we have found that there is a very clear no, sign signature of the spalling. So, this spalling is increased at very dry conditions and that leads to increased wear of these materials. This is for the very high toughness materials uh, particularly what we have seen in some slides back. This is the trioxide ceramic. So, if you go back to this particular slide, I am talking about the wear volume of these particular guys like trioxide ceramic which is one of the company trioxide which is to produce zirconia powder and then we have simply taken the powder and hot pressed at 1450 degrees Celsius. Now, in the trioxide ceramic also you can see very clear spalling like you know a, a couple of groups of the abrasive groups are simply spalled, uh, spalled off and that is the case for this uh, TM2 that is the uh, uh, tozo mixed powders and they are again that and that leads to spalling and delamination in this particular case high toughness TZ piece. Now, as I said before the tetragonal to monoclinic zirconia leads to uh, toughness increase around the crack tip. Now, we have observed that uh, there are clear signs of micro cracking on the worn surfaces and also though the, the cases where we have observed significant micro cracking that also experiences higher wear or high, higher material removal or low wear resistance. Therefore, we are interested to know whether this phase transformation also takes place on the own surfaces. Now, in order to prove that what we have done, we have taken the Raman spectra from the typical bulk surface and then we have taken at different, at different positions at the center of the own surfaces where you can see very clear tetragonal band, but also very clear monoclinic band. And this monoclinic, monoclinic Raman band is also present at various locations from center to 20 micron, 40 micron, 60 micron, 80 micron, 100 micron. So, what it means that at, at, at own surfaces tetragonal zirconia transforms to monoclinic zirconia. Okay? And because the phase transformation not only is associated with the volume increase, but also associated with the micro cracking. Basically, Reactive strain energy is released by the formation and limited growth of the micro cracking. Now, how this micro cracking and phase transformation take place? Um, this is we, we are trying to explain here with some similar reports from the literature, not exactly against the same counter body, not exactly under the same testing conditions, but also the mechanism we believe may be similar. So, suppose it is a as sintered surface like hot press surface, it is sintered but cooled. So, that means there may be some phase transformation and when it is abraded, this is that there is a compressive stress layer that is formed. So, tetragonal zirconia to monoclinic zirconia phase transformation under tangential stress conditions is more favored in the absence of microstructural constraints. And again micro cracking around transformation toughened zirconia, you can see this is the tetragonal zirconia. And then when it transforms to monoclinic zirconia, uh, then it causes this micro cracks which can release at the from the periphery of the transformed phase. One can explain or rationalize this formation of the micro cracking by calculating that what is the Hertzian contact stress and this formula you have seen it before, but to repeat PR is the Hertzian contact stress. This is and then this is P is the load, R is the any given radius, A is your contact dim dimension and this is 3 P r by 4 e star to the power 1 by 3 and accordingly tangential stress can be calculated as Q r is equal to 3 mu P divided by 2 pi a square d square root 1 minus R square by a square. And from there one can do some calculations and just to uh, show you this is one of the paper I think it was published in Acta Materia in 1998 and then people have shown that group from MIT that Subra Suresh and his group has shown that this is that contact stress region at the frictional surfaces CUF 0.5 this contact stress region is shifted the high contact stress region is shifted towards the uh, tribological surfaces 
and tensile stress is always experienced at the trailing edge of the moving boundary and maximum tensile stress at tribal surface is reached when coefficient of friction is 0.3. So, therefore, you have a favorable contact stress environment which can trigger the micro cracking in this particular case of zirconia. And if you put this maximum wear volume with a maximum tangential stress and you can clearly see that this maximum tangential stress increases typically with increase and, and that leads to the wear volume. So, it has some kind of correlation if you if you kind of follow a trend line you can see that you know that those ex ceramics which will experience that higher wear volume also experiences a maximum tangential stress and which leads to tetragonal phase transformation. So, thank you.